In the last video, we evaluated some of the measures of development and we had a wee look at some of them individually. Now, as well as doing that, you can actually kind of assess them as an overall. Um, how effective are social and economic measures at measuring a broad concept like development? Now, to help us with this, we're going to be um, taking a wee look at this. We're going to pose the question, just how developed is Saudi Arabia? And that's going to help us to kind of step back and get a bit of an overview in evaluating economic and social measures of development. Now, the first thing you could ask yourself is how wealthy is Saudi Arabia? And whenever you take a look at the GNI per capita, which purchasing power parity, is $24,870. Is that a lot of money? Does that mean that the people in Saudi Arabia are wealthy? How does that compare, in other words, to other countries? Well, you can see in this map of GNI per capita that it puts it in around about here. Uh, towards the middle, it's reasonably well off, but if we put in the MEDC, LEDC line here, we can see that according to the GNI per capita, Saudi Arabia is one of the most developed of the LEDCs. Uh, there are very, very few countries here that are LEDCs that are uh, as dark a blue, and therefore very few of them are as rich. So it turns out that in terms of economic development, Saudi Arabia is pretty well off. But economic development is only one aspect about, of development. So what about social development? Now, in the previous video, we looked at some of the more conventional ways of measuring social development, like uh, birth rate, death rate, infant mortality rate, number of people per doctor, and so forth. But uh, under the broader scope of social development, we can look at the role of women in society in Saudi Arabia. And these little cartoons uh, give us a little bit of an indication as to the role of women in that society. Pause the video and have a quick read of them. Now, what they're showing is uh, something about the fact that women are currently not allowed to drive in Saudi Arabia. Here we have this one at the back here is kind of hidden in behind with a... Um, there is a woman driver in that car, which is hidden, and the men here are not at all happy. Uh, this is a, a recent development. Women were not allowed to vote. Uh, they've recently got the vote, but it's only in local elections, and they still can't drive. You can't drive to get there. Some more videos showing that. There is a woman at a steering wheel with a prohibited sign and the fight back here where the women say, we don't want to be in the back seat, we want to learn how to drive. Driving is one issue. Here's another one. Um, this is from a blog of a European woman who's living in Saudi Arabia. And she says this in her blog, Saudi Arabia forbids women to eat while publicly exposed. All restaurants, including this KFC, have what are called family areas where women can eat behind the curtains. There we go. And here are some of the signs into that KFC. The family entrance where the women can go with the women. And here are with their children. Here is a sign. All the single ladies. All the single ladies. All the single ladies. No, you're not allowed. You're not allowed. And it's not just KFC. Here's a McDonald's. If you look carefully here, we've got a couple of men this side, the women here, and there is an actual divider with this one. And in this report, they're talking about having separate entrances for the men and the women. And a kind of separate but equal practice. The men's area is much more lavish and comfortable, where the women's side is missing seats. Women without a male companion are barred, and when many women are not allowed to drive. So McDonald's solves this, according to this little report, by having a home delivery service available to them. Now, you might think home delivery in McDonald's is a great idea, but think again of the context of why that's something that's necessary here. So we pose the question, just how developed is Saudi Arabia? Well, when we look at economic terms, the GNI per capita purchasing power Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia comes in at a very impressive 38th in the entire world, one of the most uh, economically developed uh, of the LEDCs. When you look at some of the social measures of development, like the Gender Inequality Index, it comes in at 135th, from 38th to 135th, depending on whether you look at economic or this particular aspect of social development. Now, crucially, here is our conclusion. See the problem. One number tells us some things, but not everything about a country. One number tells us some things, but not everything. So, 
when you're measuring development, which itself is a concept that, that covers a whole range of things, of social and economic things, it's good to have a measure that includes more than one number. One number tells us some things, but not everything. So for development, it's good to have more than one number in it. Now, the question is, does such a measure exist? Dot, dot, dot. The answer is... Well, of course it was, otherwise that was a bit of an anticlimax. It's called the Human Development Index. This is one number with three measures in it. It includes an economic measure, the uh, GNI per capita, and it's adjusted for purchasing power parity. And then it includes two social measures, economic, or sorry, the life expectancy and some measures of education. And whenever you look at this, it's called a composite measure of development because it is composed of more than one element. When you take all three of these together, here's what happens to Saudi Arabia. Now, Saudi Arabia starts, um, well, in fact, let's go over here for Saudi Arabia. Uh, if we go over here for Saudi Arabia, it starts up here when you look at the economic measure here, GDPs, which is close and similar to GNI. But then whenever you bring in the Human Development Index, it shifts down in terms of the ranking. So what that shows us is that Saudi Arabia economically is very well off. But whenever you bring in uh, the broader composite measure, which includes economic and social measures, then... Uh, it doesn't do quite so well. So the question we posed at the start, how effective are social and economic measures of development? Well, them, uh, those measures taken on their own have um, a, an important role. They, they are useful, but they do have their limitations because they can only ever show one aspect of development, and development itself is made up of many, many different aspects. Therefore, in order to reflect the, the, that diverse nature of the concept of development, you're better to have a measure that also reflects that diverse nature. Human Development Index is one of the most widely used ones, uh, and it includes economic and social measures. Now, because we are evaluating here, what are the negatives of Human Development Index? Well, the main one that you maybe would want to focus on is the fact that it doesn't include environmental aspects of development. It's, it doesn't uh, cover um, sustainable development, in other words. Uh, and increasingly in a world which is facing global warming, which is facing a crisis of food production that's using up our resources at a faster rate than we can replace them. Uh, the whole issue of whether development is happening at a sustainable rate is a crucial one, and yet the HDI doesn't include it. So those are some of the positives. It has a broad range of economic and social aspects, and here would be the negative. Does it take into consideration social development? And that allows us then to evaluate uh, the social and economic measures, um, look at the limitations of them in terms of the fact that they're not very broad. It allows us to introduce then the composite measure of development of HDI that broadens it out to look at economic and social together. But also to criticise that slightly by saying, well, what about the environment? What about sustainable development? That's not included as part of the HDI.